ஓம் சாந்தி this topic of becoming worthy in god's eyes is a very very interesting topic a very beautiful topic first of all we will see the things we have been doing on the path of devotion to win to conquer god's heart to be worthy in his eyes what are the things we have been doing for me personally it was a big shock when i came into knowledge one among the big one among the many shocks i received was about because i have been up till here in my struggle in my battle in my stumbling in search of god on the path of devotion in this very birth so when i came here i thought after all the things i have been doing on the path of devotion i thought sincerely thought that i must have had achieved a good level a good stage in god's heart in god's eyes but when i came here as i said the big shock was god said in hindi he uses the word children bachche abhi aap sabhi bandar layak ban gaye worthy of monkeys can you imagine after doing so many things on the path of devotion trying to win to win god's heart he says we have because he is the only authority who can because he says only the truth so he can say that we are worthy of monkeys and his job his task in hindi he says bandar layak se main mandir layak banane aaya hu from being worthy of monkeys god comes to make us worthy of being worshiped in the temples mandir layak he plays on the word the very very sweet intonation bandar layak se mandir layak worthy of monkeys bandar layak and worthy to be worshiped mandir layak so on the path of devotion we have been trying very hard sometimes to impress god sometimes to influence him sometimes to convince him sometimes to even try to convert him hmm? i think god says like this but i think if god would have done this in this way said this in this way it would have been better for me trying to even convert god to our own belief and thinking so the question beautiful question arises 
whether we already were worthy in God's eyes before coming here because there is one very beautiful song connected in this aspect. One song says, we have come here having awakened our fortune, our destiny. Eh? And sometimes the question arises, Baba asks us whether we have come here having awakened our fortune or we have come here to awaken our fortune. So in this context, being worthy in God's eyes, how we come here Did we come here already being worthy in God's eyes or we have come here to become worthy in God's eyes? So there are many, many points, very beautiful points, either straightforwardly connected with this title, this subject, or if you want a little bit in a more subtle way, but all to all, pleasantly connected with this topic. So, who are those who who think that we, because for to come here, as we say, we must, in some way or another. I become worthy in God's eyes to have been chosen. Eh? We say that we are the chosen few. But to be here itself is a proof, if you want, that we are already worthy in God's eyes to have been chosen eh? to come here among the chosen few. Because to be, to have been chosen out of seven billion souls is already something that we can be intoxicated about our own self. But on the other side, that is also, just like when Baba says, Whichever blessing Baba bestows upon us, he says, child, you have to work for it. We receive the blessing, but at the same time, we accept with a loveful heart, grateful heart, but at the same time, we know that we are not already full, complete about these, these blessings. We have to work for them. So first of all, when we say we have been chosen, today we are all in Madhavan. Tomorrow we'll be going back to our own particular places, but still considering ourselves as a resident of Madhavan. So, for me personally, seeing myself as a permanent Madhavan Nivasi, resident of Madhavan, the question always arises within myself. I have the intoxication of being a Madhavan resident, but at the same time, Baba says, wherever a Brahmin sets his foot, that place becomes Madhavan. Sometimes we tend to think that only Madhavan residents are worthy in God's eyes. Means more worthy, if you want. 
But Baba says no. Someone may, may be a Madhuban resident, but if he or she does not follow the mariadas, the, the rules and regulations of a Brahmin life fully while being a Madhuban resident, and the one outside Madhuban, if he or she follows all the principles, so who is a true and real Madhuban resident in God's eyes? So as I said in the beginning, there are many points connected directly or indirectly that is very interesting for us to see and check how far we have become worthy of God's eyes or what else is to be done to become worthy of God's eyes. Worthy for me, another word means to be important. Okay. Being important in God's eyes, worthy of God's eyes. Tomorrow if we have an appointment with a VIP, there are many things that we we try to do before going to meet that person. Many things. To please that person in some way or another to impress, to influence that person. But here Baba says, among all the souls of the world, you are not only VIPs, but VVIPs, very, very important persons in my eyes. But for this, to become worthy in God's eyes, my churning about this is that we have to pay a lot of attention, be cautious about especially our thoughts, our words, our actions. Be worthy of God's eyes means trying maximum to please God to be pleasant to God. Hmm? Worthy, important, and pleasant to God. On the path of devotion, I again, again come back to that point. We have been trying hard, one interesting, to impress, influence, convert, convince, but also to bargain with God. I am originally from Mauritius. There is one French island nearby called Réunion Island. I've been very close to one person there. He was in connection with knowledge. So he was also very deeply in devotion. So he would clearly confess to me what he used to do on the path of devotion, means bargaining with God. One very interesting, he would bring a goat. All these meant to try to please, to be worthy, 
in God's eyes or important. He would bring a goat in front of the goddess temple. He would see, see. He would say, see to the goddess. If you fulfill my wishes, my desires, this is for you. Otherwise, I take back. So in order to win God's heart or be worthy in his eyes, one of the things I just mentioned, you can imagine that bargaining with God. But when we come here, Baba says, he himself says, children, you are my VVIPs. On the path of devotion, we used to say that we are the dust of your feet. When we came here, Baba says, three very interesting things. Firstly, you are the light of my eyes. You are seated on my heart throne. And thirdly, you are the crown of my head, on my head. Okay? In Hindi, aankhon ka noor, light of my eyes. Seated on my heart throne, dil takht nasheen. And thirdly, the crown of my head, sirtaj. The question again arises, whether we are already that or we have to work for it. If we think that we have already conquered God's heart, been worthy in his eyes, very good. But this can also bring some type of ego along with. This is why Baba says all the blessings he gives, we have to work for them. So, There are many, many points closely related to this topic, but one which I personally cherish. I have been working very, very hard on this, putting this point into practice, and I've seen how close this point has brought me to God's heart. Which point? to treat and consider whoever comes in front of me as the most important person in the world. Because for me personally, there may be many ways and means to conquer God's heart, to be worthy in his eyes. But for me, the whole subject can rely on one thing, being kind, being kind to God's children. Whoever comes to me, I consider that person having been sent by God to give me an opportunity if there is a little bit delicate encounter, never mind. God has sent this soul to make me prove that I am an obedient child. Make me prove that I can use the powers, the virtues God has showered upon me. Suppose, for instance, 
if there is delicate encounter, difficult encounter, something that hurt me inside, I immediately am thankful to that soul. He or she does not know that at that time he or she is, is being harsh to me, rude, disrespectful. But I thank that soul from my inner heart at that time because he or she does not know that he is giving me the opportunity of being obedient to God, of using the powers, power of tolerance, power to face, power to merge. For me, this is a very, very good means to win God's heart, to be obedient to him. For me, this is the proof of love for God, to be obedient to him. I don't need to whisper in his ears, I love you, I love you for 24 hours. But I just try to be obedient to him. I'm sure I'll be worthy of his eyes. Because I don't think even in the worldly life also, if someone is harsh, bears a grudge towards a child of someone, and at the same time bears some grudge, some hatred, and at the same time he tries to forge a loveful, a cordial relationship with the father, of the child. I doubt whether he or she will succeed in doing that. Now, with God now, if we bear any grudge, any hatred, I am very proud today to be able to share this point upon with you because I have worked a lot on this, very hardly. until and unless we don't use the slogan of Baba and Dadi Janki, Juk Juk, Marmar, Seek, Seek, till and unless you don't bow down, you don't die alive, you don't learn, not possible for you to conquer God's heart. So if you bear any enmity, any hatred, any grudge with someone, not possible, until and unless, as I said in the beginning, many points related to this topic. One of them is forgiveness. We'll come on that topic later on, at that point. Just to tell you, that to forgive something else, as Baba says, and to forget, as Jadi Danki says, forgive and forget. Here Baba says, Dari Janki says, forget and forgive. If I may ask brothers and sisters here, if we have ever forgiven somebody, even once in our life time, would you kindly raise your hands? If for once in your life, those who have ever forgiven someone in their life, right? 
Thank you. Maybe those who have not eh, risen their hands, they are very clever. Maybe they know this point. But for those who have raised their hands, I would say no. They have not forgiven. Why? Because the issue is not yet closed. If you still remember that you have forgiven, means the issue is not closed yet. This is why Baba also says, and Daddy Janki also says, until you don't forget, means it, you have not forgiven. So how can you forge if you still bear something bitter in your heart for God's child, how you, can you claim that you are worthy to sit in his eyes, worthy to sit on his heart throne? So all these are very interesting points, very simple points, but very interesting too. Be cautious of and to check and to see. Hmm? When, when, when I came in this knowledge, before coming here, when I was on the path of devotion, I would always, in my prayers to God, say, ask God, I would very much like to become a good human being, always. I would always like to become a good human being. When I, when I came here, Baba says, your aim and objective is Brahmin, angel, and deity. But always I have kept that point, which I used to cherish on the path of devotion, always as a backbone for my progress, spiritual progress. Which point of being before everything, because Brahmin, angel, if I, I'm a Brahmin, the process of becoming an angel and a deity is automatic. This is guaranteed. But for me, that point of being and remaining a good human being always dominates my inner consciousness, if you wish. Because Baba says, today, human beings with the help of science, they have been able to fly better than birds in the sky. Human beings today, with the help of science, they have learned how to swim better than fish in the ocean. But today's human beings find it very, very, very difficult just to walk on earth, being a human being, considering oneself as a human being. He finds it very easy, easier to fly in the sky and to swim, but just to walk, he finds it very, very. So for me, first of all, before becoming an angel or a deity, first of all, being an, a good human being is very, very important and interesting for me in order to win God's heart and be worthy in his eyes. 
for me what, is, what, what it, it means to be a human being, a good human being, is essentially to render, make things easier. for whoever comes into my contact. When once Baba said in the Murli, what, is, what does it mean giving good wishes or pure feelings or giving blessing? What does it mean to bless someone, to have good wishes, pure feelings for someone? What does it mean? to make things easier for that soul in all aspect, to render things easier for him. Sending good wishes, pure feelings, blessing means to make things easier for one person, one soul. Sometimes someone just calls upon you and says, you know, you do some special meditation for this particular soul. He is going to, and a very difficult moments. And you sit in Baba's remembrance, particularly for that soul, and later on you get the response. Okay? That everything went, went on so smoothly so easily, could not believe. Then you really feel that you have had been of some help eh, to that particular soul. You are thankful to Baba at that time. But another point related to this subject, very interesting to become worthy of God's eyes in God's eyes, but first of all, Baba is the eternal fountain, Baba is the ocean showering everything upon us, but we should ask ourselves how much we have developed. To be worthy means, first of all, how much we have developed the art of receiving from Baba. Before putting into practice, it is very interesting to check how far we have the art of receiving. Baba has got the art of giving, donating. It is very good if we check. They say of a people who has developed the art of receiving, the art of learning, that he would, even in delicate things, in bad things also, he would learn and take something good. And the one who has not developed the art of receiving, art of taking, even in something good also, he would not be able to take anything from that. So it is very interesting to know whether we have this art of receiving. There are four types of souls. Who are scared to receive. Sometimes they say that when, when can you judge? It's a little bit separate from this subject, the topic, but still very interesting. Sometimes they say of a person of a, about a generous hearted, how can you make out this one or that one is a generous hearted soul? Open hearted, big hearted, 
generous hearted? How can you make out? The common answer would be the way he gives. Right? The more one gives, donates, you can make out. But here we have learned that it's the inverse which is true. The way someone receives, the way someone welcomes a thing, someone who has art, the art of receiving will prove that he knows the pleasure, the joy of receiving, he would definitely know also the joy of giving. You can make out whether this one has or not, is a generous person, a generous soul. How? Not only with the way he gives, but with the way he receives. You can make out. A flower, a rose, can bring as much sparkle on his face than the person who receives a diamond. But you can make out. But in Baba's children also, sometimes there are those four categories. They want to become worthy of God's eyes, in God's eyes, of God's heart. But first of all, they feel, means they have not learned the art of receiving. They have not developed the art of receiving. God is giving, God is showering his ocean, his eternal fountain on us. But I don't have the art of receiving. I don't know, I have not learned how to receive. Secondly, it's not only a question of receiving from God, but as I said, you can make out the way one receives from people as well. There are those who say, I they have not learned, they don't know. Secondly, they feel, if I take, means I, I would weaken my system, my personality would be lessened, feel inferior in front of that person, if I take. Thirdly, I would feel indebted to that person if I take. I will have to give back. And fourthly, he feels that he is not worthy to receive. On one hand, we are generous hearted. We like to give, to donate. But on the other side, if my pocket is empty, I am afraid of taking from God. So I should develop the art of receiving, very important. So as to become generous hearted and be worthy in God's eyes. Another point which I, I mentioned in the beginning. First of all, if it pleases me to think that I am worthy of God's eyes. If on the other side, I spend my 24 hours 
in the pursuit of worldly things. For 21 hours, 20, 24 hours, sorry, I make the world important, worthy for me. Then, it's very easy for me to ask my own self whether I would be important in God's eyes. If I make God important in my life, I would definitely become important for him. If for 24 hours I make the world important for me, then when it is time to ask blessings, protection, support, love, with whom I ask those things, not with the world with God. So it is very interesting to see how far we devote our time and thought. As Baba said, if you want to conquer my heart, be kind to my children, be kind to the souls. Your mind, your thoughts, my words, my actions should be such so as to be able to wipe a tear, you know, wipe some tears on someone's face, even my thoughts. My thoughts, my words, my actions should be such as to bring back a smile on someone's face. Very easy to win God's heart. Very easy to sit on his eyes, to become the light of his eyes. Hmm? You can see whether we are instruments to bring back a smile on someone's face, to wipe someone's tears. It does not cost me anything. Eh? Someone rightly said that the things no one would have had caused so much harm to the world than the one who would have had in his possession, in his capabilities, capacities, to do something good for the world, but he or she did not do it. So, so many things Baba has decorated us with. We have the capacities to do many good things to the world without any cost, but the pure desire should be there in order to win God's heart and be seated on his eyes. Sometimes, while trying to be important in God's eyes, I am so much entangled in worldly things. Majority of times, no matter what sort of circumstances come, situation come to me, a hard situation, a hard circumstance. But that is not so important for me. I am more concerned about, I find it more important to think what the world will think about it. I give importance to what the world will think about this situation. I try to be worthy, important in God's eyes, but I give importance to what the world think about me. 
first. Secondly, what I think about me. So, then thirdly, what God thinks about me. Should be the inverse. So what Baba thinks about me is more important to me than whatever the world thinks about me or what I think about my own self. Very interesting point because of time. In today's Murli Baba said, on the one side, when I was shining about this point, I say, I must become important, worthy in God's eyes. But at the same time, I should check. Today's Murli Baba says, should not be influenced with any good or bad action performed by anybody. I should not try to imitate and be, in the in, be under the influence of anyone performing either a good or bad action. Before ending, I would like to come again on the point of forgiveness which is a very interesting point for all of us. In one uh, uh, class, I heard, and then I started putti putting it into practice, it helped me a lot, which point says, if you forgive someone, if you try to be tolerant, towards someone, you forgive someone, means you have, at the time, built a bridge which you will be able to cross someday or another. Because it, will, it may happen in your life that you will be in need of someone's forgiveness in your life. And at that time, if the bridge is not there, you won't be able to cross. If you forgive someone with a happy heart, you are building a bridge. And if you are tolerant towards someone, you are also lighting a lamp that will help you to see the light in some difficult or dark days of your life. So all these are interconnected with being kind to God's children so as to be able to win his heart and be seated on his eyes. I would like to end with that interesting point, maybe not connected with this subject, which I, which I learned just recently. I'm sure it will please everybody. So one, <clears throat> one guru was giving some teachings to his disciple. He says, when you this, uh, this point may touch many of us here because you will know why. So well, the Guru says, when you speak about, when you explain people about heaven, your lips must be like rose petals. Okay? It means so, so much sweetness in your words. And your eyes must be like a lotus flower, so pure, eh? so much purity in the eyes. 
and your face must be shining like the sun hmm? when you speak about heaven. We all do speak about heaven, no? We are explaining people about, no? right? So it is meant for us also. So the disciple asks, the student asks the guru, says, Guruji, is very good. My lips should be like rose petals. My eyes should be like lotus flower. My face should be shining like a sun when I speak about heaven. But what about when I speak about hell? The guru said, no problem, you don't have to worry. Your normal face would do the work. So thank you very much. Baba says today, we should not do too much tran tran eh? in the morning. He used the word tran tran. Tran tran means the sound echoed by the frogs in the rivers, which means not too, not too much debate. Eh? I think we have had enough on this subject. Thank you very much for your kind attention and your love. Om Shanti.